Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikins from Big Mountain Studio, and today I'm going to teach you a little bit more about transitions. I had a previous video that I released that taught you how to do a certain type of transition. Well, there's another way you can do a transition too that's actually a little bit simpler, and I'm going to show you that today. And the sample application I'm going to be using is this application right here, which I had used in a previous application to demonstrate how to create transitioning colors and gradients like you see in the back here up on the where the title is. Okay good so you'll notice when I switch to different areas here world country and around me the images flip they do this uh, curl I guess you could say that comes from the bottom or it starts from the top and then goes to the bottom and that's what I'm going to show you today I actually do that by using a transition so let's get started here I have my application and as you can see in this file right here, it's called View Controller Extension. I have two extensions here that is basically just extending the view controller. And I did this for the purpose of kind of cleaning out the view controller so I could do this previous video with little, very little code starting out. Well, we're going to go back into this file, and I'm going to show you this part right here. And this basically just implements the UI table view data source. And there's only two functions. This is the minimal you need to get a table view running. And here you see I DQ a cell, but I cast it as a custom table view cell. And that's because in my storyboard, I actually have a prototype cell that I use. So here's my table view, and we go into the cell, and this is a prototype cell. And if you look at the identity inspector, you see it's a type of custom table view cell. So I created that and I made the cell pretty big so it holds a square image. So when I DQ the cell, it is a type of custom table view cell. And that class only has one function called setup. And in this setup function, I just pass in one parameter called image, which I get from my data source. Okay, so let's go into this setup here. Okay, so here's where I set up the image. And basically, this custom table view cell is really simple. It only has one property called cell image. And then it just has one function where I just pass in the image and apply it to this cell image. And that cell image is this right here, this image, or this UI image view control, I should say. Okay, so right now if I run this, let's see what it looks like. Okay, and then when I switch to different segments here, you notice there's no animation. So it just kind of looks like the images are just kind of appearing in place. And we want to improve that user experience. We want to kind of give the user this idea that when you're clicking on these different options here, that the image is loading and replacing what was already there. So in order to improve that user experience, what we want to do is we want to show them like a, you know, the old image fading out and the new image fading in, or the new image flipping, flipping down and showing us the new images for either around me, the country, or the world. Or we can also do flips where it flips from right to left or top to bottom, things like that. And I'm going to show you how to do that, and it's so simple. You won't even believe this. So you want to start with UI view, just like you're doing an animation. UI view .animate, you know, has all your animations right here. Well, same with your transitions. You just do UI view .transition, and there's only two of them. And we want the second one right here. And another thing too, one of the things that changed in Xcode is now it used to have the ellipsis at the end so you couldn't see what the end of the function was, but now it puts the ellipsis in the middle so you can't see the, <laughs> what the center looks like. What you can do is just hover your mouse over it, and it will show you the entire signature of the, the function. So we want this one right here, the one with the width parameter. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, the first parameter is asking you which UI view you want to do the transition on. And this is a little bit different from the previous video, the previous transition video that I showed you, where you had to provide a from UI view and a two UI view. So we're not transitioning from one view to another, we're just using one view here. So this will be a little bit simpler. 
And the UI view that we're going to be doing the transition on is just this cell image right here. So let's supply that. And this is, they kind of call this the container. And if you watched my other video on doing transitions, you might remember that the parameter, the UI view that you provide, it actually does the transition on the super view of that UI view. Well, it's not the case with this function right here. With this function, it's going to apply the transition directly to the UI view that you supply. So when I supply the cell image, it's not going to apply the transition to the parent of the cell. It's just going to apply the transition to the cell image itself. Okay, for the duration, I'm just going to do something pretty short, which is uh, 0 0.3. And for options, this is where I'm actually going to provide which transition I want to use. So as you saw in the example, I was using a curl transition. And the way to get the transition animations is you just start typing in tran transition. And these are all the animations that are provided to you for free. You don't have to do any work. You just tell it which animation you want and the operating system will do the rest. So the example I showed you was a curl down. So let's start off with that. Okay, then you want to provide your actual animation like what is it you're going to change about this first parameter that you want animated? Well, for us, the way this first parameter is going to change is we're going to supply it a new image. So I'm just going to put that there. And do we want anything to happen after this transition is complete? No, I don't think we do. So I'm just going to delete that. And let's see how this works. So if I switch, there we go. There's your transition. Okay, so let's try something else. Let's try different transitions and see how they look. The one I like was the cross dissolve. I showed my wife and she didn't like the cross dissolve so much. She actually liked the page curl and that's why I started out with that one first. Okay, there you go. So this provides a better user experience, right? Because they can see that something is actually changing. There's an animation to the change that's happening and occurring every time you click on one of these options up, up top. So that's why I encourage you to use transitions or animation just to show to the user that something is occurring, something is changing, and it makes that change more noticeable rather than just images popping and right in place. There's a, a transition to the new image, I guess you could say. And then if you wanted to, you could also do, you know, you have a flip from right to left, and then you also have flips from top to bottom. So if you want to see what this looks like, we can run it and take a look. There you go. This totally makes it more noticeable now. Okay guys, well that's pretty much all I have for transitions. This is a very simple example and, and something that you can easily apply to your applications today to make them look that much better. It gives the user a better experience when using your apps because they can actually see that something is changing on the UI and it's a gradual change that's happening, a gradual transition or a more noticeable transition. All right, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with your friends because that really helps out the channel and I can reach more developers and help them out. And consider subscribing to be notified of more videos coming out in the future. All right, thanks.